First News with Keeler in the morning on WIBX and WIBX950.com. Brian Thomas is the economic, uh, urban and economic development director in the city of Utica. And this proposed art space building, this, uh, this apartment building in the parking lot next to the Stanley has a lot of people talking. And he's on the line right now. Brian, good morning. Morning, Bill. How are you? Good. So first off, I want to, it was a conversation that we had yesterday. The, how is this? Why have you guys been keeping this quiet? Why have you been keeping it out of the papers, out of the news cycle? Uh, what's the why you keep it secret from us? Well, I, I would argue that we haven't been keeping it secret. It's, oh, it's, as, interesting. As, as, <laughs> as Becky mentioned yesterday um, when she was on with you, uh, the city has been working with ArtSpace for roughly the last five or six years. Uh, they came to the city as a result of uh, various people in the community that were familiar with their projects in both Buffalo and Patchogue and felt that with the strong artist community that we had here in the city of Utica, that uh, housing for those artists would be um, a benefit to uh, the art community as well as the city of Utica and the, and the larger, the greater Utica region. So, um, so, so uh, it's been in the newspaper. It's just something no one really picked up on. And now all of a sudden that it seems to be moving forward, which we'll get to that, um, people feel like it, it's just one of those things. I think we automatically go to uh, nefarious thoughts. Like you guys were keeping this from us because you didn't want us to know about it. So you could spring it on us and we couldn't stop it. That seems to be the complaint with everything that we don't agree with, I'm, I'm afraid. Unfortunately, that does seem to be the case in uh, a lot of the times, but... As Becky mentioned, uh, they, there was a very public uh, market study that was done with a survey uh, of the artists in the community and around the region um, several years ago. Uh, from there, uh, this project has been talked about as part of the city's downtown revitalization initiative, the $10 million award uh, from the governor, and that this project has been a part of that. And there were num- numerous uh, public meetings that discussed both the DRI and our space specifically. How, uh, how, uh, how close is this to, to happening and what has to happen for it to be uh, approved and for it to, to move forward? Well, uh, the, the biggest piece of the financing puzzle is tax credits, which uh, our space is currently working on the application that would be submitted to the state for those tax credits. Um, they're looking to do that within the next um, month or two, I believe, is the plan. Uh, in order to submit that application, they need two things from the state for, uh, to satisfy the state. One is site control, and the second is having most of the approvals in place. Uh, so the Urban Renewal Agency did enter into an option agreement with ArtSpace at the end of December of last year. Uh, that is uh, The option is sufficient evidence of site control in order to submit that tax credit application. And they're currently in front of the planning board for site plan review and approval. Um, that would satisfy the state's requirement for having most of the uh, the approvals in place. That application, once it's submitted, uh, will be reviewed by the state. And I think uh, Becky has indicated publicly uh, before that a decision wouldn't likely be made until um, later this fall, maybe early winter. Uh, with construction hopefully to start in uh, next year. So there's no um, there's no approval process through the Common Council. This if if this goes through, this project is happening. No, there there uh, because it's on city land. Uh, okay. The Common Council approval would be required in order okay. to sell All the right. property. Yep. Uh, but again, uh, we wouldn't be looking for Common Council approval until they until our space has. Got it. Uh, the funding in place. So the, the, a common council vote isn't likely to happen until uh, the end of this year, beginning of next year. Oh, wow. So, Brian, do you understand the concern, and what are your thoughts on the concern about you're taking up some – there isn't a ton of parking over around the Stanley. You're taking away some spots. I know they said uh, – Becky said on the show yesterday there would be a net gain of five spots with a lot the city wants to put in. But at the same time, you now have 40 tenants moving into that building. And they'll get 40 spots. Can, can you talk about that concern and, and what, what it is from the city's perspective? Sure. Uh, the car park parking lot, which is the official name of the, uh, the parking lot next to the Stanley, has about 130 spaces. Um, they, as Becky mentioned yesterday, our space is looking to build on the front 
half acre uh, of that lot, um, which would displace a number of parking spaces. The city owns two vacant lots um, behind what's currently the Lotus Garden, back on Park Ave. Uh, I have proposed that the Urban Renewal Agency would construct with its funds a roughly 40-car parking lot back there, um, which would accommodate uh, the the spaces lost due to the art space project, and we'd end up with a net gain of about five spaces. It would be fully lit um, in in keeping in mind safety concerns. Um, There are six handicapped spaces up near Genesee Street. Those would be pushed back. They're still still maintained. Um, once, if our space were to move forward and, and build the project, it would be shifted back um, towards Park Ave, about uh, 60 feet. Somebody was complaining about, uh, they were worried about the Masonic Temple. Um, Tom called in about yeah, that. Yeah, that uh, they would lose parking back there. Well, I think he said it, uh, included in the 13, I'm sorry if I'm wrong on this, I think he said included in the 1,300 spots in that area that Becky mentioned, some of those are parking spots at the Knights Templar. And he said, we have events going on, so you're not guaranteed to have those accessible when they have shows at the Stanley. I, I think that was his concern. But can you, can you talk about that? Absolutely. Uh, the 1,300 spaces that Becky referred to are public spaces. Uh, there was a question, too, of whether there was a map available of those spaces. And if you yeah, go on the yeah. city's website, under the Division of Off-Street Parking Bureau, and click on uh, parking facilities, there is a map that shows you uh, the public parking that's available downtown. 1,300 spaces includes 130 spaces in the car park parking lot, uh, roughly 250 spaces in the Union Blandina surface lot, uh, 450 spaces in the um, Kennedy parking garage, the city-owned parking garage, and then roughly 525 spaces, I believe, in the Washington Street parking garage. All that adds up to the 1,300. It does not include any privately owned spaces, such as the, the Masonic parking lot. Is Kennedy open? Parking garage, is that currently open, or is that under construction? It is open. It is open. And isn't that getting improvements through the uh, through the hospital project? Are there improvements being done? Washington is the okay. uh, right. the one that's attached to the hotel and uh, currently does have supports in it. Um, so I don't, I don't know that the entire uh, supply of parking spaces, which I think is about yep. 525, are currently available. However, the Common Council uh, has allocated money. Um, to that, um, to the renovation mm-hmm. of that garage, uh, um, and uh, that garage is also included in the uh, the city's DRI for some right. funding for additional renovations. Talk about the uh, open air parking versus having a building there, and and the the image that it sets off for uh, for a for a downtown district. Well, uh, Becky touched on it yesterday, but um, essentially, it, it, along a. a uh, a main street such as Genesee Street is for for the city of Utica. It's important to reestablish the, the street wall, which is uh, the the face of the buildings along the street along the right of way. Uh, to have a, a, a parking lot on your main street, um, just it's not it's not what you're looking for in terms of good urban design. You want to have reestablished street wall. You want to have good architecture, active storefronts, buildings with activity in it that result in activity on the streets. That's that's good urban design, and and the parking lot should really be behind the building. Brian, what do you uh, you know? There's a lot of it's 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 shocking when you see all the construction that is uh, that is going down, and and if this actually happens, it would mean a new building construction happening right next to the Stanley Theater. Um, you look at the uh, the road project downtown uh, Nexus, uh, the fact that they uh, there's going to be a parking garage going up. There's a new medical building that's going to be uh, constructed by uh, a company outside MVHS. Of course, there is the downtown hospital happening. Uh, a complete transformation of downtown Utica right now. Um, historic transformation. What are your What's your assessment of it all? Do you ever take a step back and look at everything that's happening right now? I, I think this is a, a once in a lifetime opportunity that we have in, in front of us and. Uh, Mayor Palmieri is, is making the most of, of uh, what we're seeing. Um, and who would have thought um, 15, 20 years ago we'd be having, we'd be talking about some of the problems that we're, we're talking about now with parking and, and downtown activity. And it's a good thing. Um, but I think it's, it's all problems that are solvable. 
uh, if we, we sit down and, and put our minds to it, uh, I think we can resolve a lot of the issues as it relates to, to art space. Um, to art space, what about uh, the parking garage, the hospital parking garage? Well, that's, that's a discussion at this point between uh, the city, the county, and, and, and MVHS. Do you think we're, yeah. we're, we're close there? Uh, I think I think it's possible that there will be some movement in in the coming months. Okay, all right, uh, all right. I'll take that as an answer. Um, that leaves a, it's almost like the, the the weatherman saying or the weather woman saying oh, it's going to rain. Um, it might be sunny, and we might get some clouds out there. It's today. more like the farmers' <laughs> almanac saying we're going to have a really cold winter, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and they're never wrong. <laughs> and they're never wrong. Yeah. All right. We, no one can say Brian, you were wrong on that right. answer. So, so um, okay, can I? Well, that, that was my. That was my goal. Bill. Okay. Fair enough. One more question. I, I forget the name of it. It's so obvious it escapes me. What's the little waterfront Utica has behind all the hotels? Uh, the Utica uh, Harbor. The Harbor. Harbor Point. What, any update oh. there that, that you can talk? A trick question. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. No. A- any update there you can provide? I'm just curious because there was a lot of talk about it going back a couple of years, and I know you know the city opened up so you could at least when you drove by you could kind of see some of the water there. But what is the plan for that? I, I heard years ago it was baseball parks. I know they're putting hotels around it. Uh, what's the future of Harbor Point? Uh, well, the city recently completed the reconstruction of the bulkhead wall. Uh, as well as uh, an extension of Worts Ave for access into the um, the 16 acres, which the state uh, is transferring to the Utica Harbor Point Development Corporation. Uh, the city, the uh, LDC, the Harbor Point Development Corporation, has uh, asked for uh, proposals from private developers and uh, is currently reviewing. Uh, proposals for both the 16 acres as well as the uh, the 1933 building, uh, which is on your left as you as you would enter towards the harbor, uh, and we're we're working with uh, developers that are interested in in developing that. Uh, as you mentioned, there are athletic fields too that are part of the plan, and uh, that those lands are currently under control of National Grid, uh, and the, the the LDC is is in discussions with uh, National Grid about. Uh, Securing site control for those those properties and then seeking funding in order to construct those uh, athletic fields. Can you talk about any plans that have been submitted, whether it's housing, whether it's entertainment, whether it's retail? Can you shed any light on the the proposals? I think you you called them that have been submitted. Yeah, the master plan uh, for the harbor uh, calls for a mix of uses for the sixteen acres, including residential uh, and niche retail, um, and the developer that we are talking to uh, are in line with that vision. Uh, in terms of the 1933 building, that's going to be largely uh, a mix as well. Uh, it may be more retail and commercial and less residential, but uh, again, that's that the LDC is in discussions with developers about uh, all right. both, both parcels. Uh, we're talking to Brian Thomas, Urban and Economic Development Director in the city of Utica. A couple more uh, questions. I want to start with Pat, who's on the line in Utica right now on parking. Pat, you're on with Brian Thomas. Good morning. Yes, uh, this is, what a great su- subject. I have a question, and maybe this is the best time to get it answered, because either I missed something or uh, or it's not been talked about. Yep. Remember when the state building was first built? There was a parking garage behind there. And um, evidently, because of problems with it, eventually it was knocked down. Was there ever any plan to rebuild that? And is that still a viable option of parking for us downtown, it, it, you know, to have that state building uh, parking lot rebuilt? Brian well, is, uh, yeah. As you noted, uh, as the caller noted, um, that is state, state land. Right. Um, when the garage was demolished um, by the state, there was a surface lot put in. Uh, I don't know that the state has ever um, considered erecting a new garage in that site. Um, no, I wish we would have thought for were, it. <laughs> yeah, because I, I got to tell you, um, worst parking in the in the world over there. And, and yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, somebody should have pursued it. Maybe I, I, I understand yeah. it's maybe yeah. you can't speak for the state, but. 
you know, those are lost opportunities. I love the fact that you're talking about this project because these are the kind of problems we need to talk about and solve, hopefully solve, because yep. we need all these yep. projects. Yep. Um, but I am sympathetic Absolutely. to what that might mean to the Stanley and, and difficulty, and, and I hope something can be worked out. All right, uh, all right Pat. That brings up a, a very – Pat, thank you. You bring up a yeah. really good point in that these are good problems to have. Um, as opposed to the problems of nothing going on, we're now arguing over something that is proposed and and construction and investment. That's a good thing, especially if you're the director of urban and economic development. It is, and that's really been my goal and, and the mayor's goal uh, since he took office is is to have the the kind of development that we're seeing now and and that raises the kind of problems yep. we're talking about now. Uh, but I, I don't believe the problems that we're talking about are anything that can't be solved. Okay. And then one more uh, question. Somebody asking about the uh, that area back there, uh, which would then be behind this building. So up there near Lotus Garden, uh, this person is concerned that uh, it would be dangerous back there. Um, what are your thoughts? Again, again, our design calls for lighting uh, so that the area would be safe and mm-hmm. secure. Um, and... It, it does require a little bit more of a walk, uh, but I think as downtown continues to develop, um, we, we're going to have to come to a new mindset that we haven't had to accept for the last 20, 30, 40 years, that you're going to have to walk further from where you're parking your car to your ultimate destination. Listen, if you it, tell me the next, downtown. the next thing you tell me is there's going to be increased traffic. I'm moving, yeah. okay? <laughs> I don't like traffic. Right. I don't like walking. As I said yesterday, Brian, we don't wait for nothing around yeah, here. Yeah, well, especially after <laughs> just leaving Tampa, you don't know traffic up here. We got it lucky. <laughs> um, <laughs> but with regard to that parking behind, uh, you know, next to Lotus Garden, let's say for whatever reason this art space project doesn't go forward. Can we still go forward with the project to add 40 spaces and lighting to uh, to that lot? Great question. Uh, we still could, sure. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. It, uh, as I said, it's city-owned land, so. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, Brian, anything else? Have we exhausted all possible questions? <laughs> I'm sure we haven't, but we'll do it again. Let's do it again, Brian. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank all right. you. Have a great day. Uh, that's Brian Thomas uh, from the city of, uh, of Utica. This is, uh, I, I guess, the point that Pat made is is a pretty good point, and that is we're is we're better off we're we're in a good place when we're arguing over progress versus arguing over the lack thereof i uh, i would say